Here's another Gantt chart visualization for you in Power BI. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Power Gantt chart visual by Nova Silva. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, and let's dig in. So here we are inside a Power BI file, which I already populated with some data. This is data coming from Power PPM, the Projectum application that contains project management uh, related entities, such as we have initiatives, portfolio, program, and we have tasks. Now this page is going to be the basis for our um, Power Gantt chart visual. And we're going to place that visual in this gray box here. I already have the Power Gantt chart visual added. And in case you don't have it already, uh, there is a link in the Get More Visuals where you can add it. So let's click on the Power Gantt chart. And once that loads, I have the option to move that into that gray uh, rectangle. And what I love from the start is we have a clean overview of the Power Gantt chart. We have the company name in here. We have some contact details and we have a get help button. And this actually is a very useful get help file that you that opens up in Microsoft or any browser that you have. Now I'm not going to click on this because this is an instructional video on how to do the things that are on that page. But suffice to say, this is a very useful link. And I really like what the Nova Silva company has done here. So what we see is there's a lot of information on the right side that we can add. It's important to know that in the Power Gantt chart, we have two core components. We have items and further down below, we have our milestones. These are the main components of the Power Gantt chart. And our items are going to be our rows and our milestones are going to be dots on those lines with their own legend and their own um, information, if you like that. On this page, we'll have a project overview of the information that we're seeing on the left side. So we have an initiative uh, UID, we have a start, we have a finish, and we have a name. So how would we populate that in the Power Again chart? Let's navigate to our PUM initiative and let's populate the UID into the item value. Now for the item value, you need to have a unique value that is equal across everywhere within your data set. So make sure that that is a number or a global unique ID, anything like that will work. Next up, what we not want to do is add the item name, which is typically called name in here. So with the item number and the item name, I now want to populate start and finish date to get something in view. And just like that, we have a nice Gantt chart showing all our values that we have in here, all the projects that we see. Uh, there's a large set of projects in there because this is the demo environment for Projectum. Let's see what we can do to increase what we're seeing here. So for progress, we have a progress value. Make sure that this is a percentage value. Otherwise you will get very strange numbers and very strange bars because I had 100 as a normal number and it just went all the way out of the visual. So here you have the color, uh, which you can also, of course, change. Uh, then additional columns is everything that comes on the left side of your visual. So if I want to add a column such as uh, who's the sponsor of this project, and I might also want to have the owner in here, I can add the information here. Now, because I'm using such a small space, uh, it might make sense to have the space uh, increase to the full length of your visual, but that's not the case here. Of course, you can have focus mode. And in focus mode, you'll have options to showcase 
the whole length of the column as well as the whole visual. Now moving down a little bit, we have something called the legend. Uh, currently it doesn't have a legend uh, because legends will show up on top, but I can add a legend. I could, for instance, add the portfolio name and the portfolio will be linked to the initiatives that we have in our visual. And here you see that we have the growth portfolio, we have the running portfolio, non -po no portfolio at all and product portfolio. If I return to my report and I decrease the size of the columns again, I can now filter on my portfolio, such as the run portfolio, and everything on the page changes accordingly. Product portfolio, growth portfolio has the most values in here. Further down below, we'll see that we can add labels and tooltips. And the label references a value that is inside the bar. So we could add the name to the label. And when doing this, we can see that the value is populated as long as the bar is big enough. We can decrease the size of our zoom, and then we'll see other projects popping up as well. We can move the zoom very nicely to focus on the content that we actually want to look at. So let's increase the full size again. Tooltips is exactly what you expect it to be. We can see that there's already some tooltip information in here, such as the name, the start and finish date. Uh, we can add information such as the sponsor and the owner in here so that we don't have that real estate lost inside our visual. We'll remove that part here in the additional columns. We might want to have instead, I want to have progress in here. And let's change the name of that to be a percentage sign. Everyone will understand that that is the percentage complete. And if I hover over this, there we go. Makes perfect sense. And if I hover over a task now, I can see that Christian is the owner and there is no sponsor for this particular project. If I hover over any of the others, I can see that I chose the uh, UID instead of the name of the sponsor. <laughs> mistakes were made. So moving down a little bit more, we can see that we have the second core value inside the Power Gantt chart visual. This is milestones, focusing purely on milestones inside the bars. Uh, they're a separate group, uh, which also contains a, a separate legend, separate tooltips, uh, separate dates, a name. To populate this, I have my Gantasks entity and my Gantasks entity I have one specifically for only the milestones. Now as you know milestones only have a start or a finish date so let's just use the start date. The moment I add the milestone I get a warning message which is very nice because data might be lost because you do not have milestone data for each task. So not all the projects within our demo tenant have milestone data. Well, that's nice. Select the show items with no data option in each data element to show everything again. So let's do that. even with all the show items with no data selected. Sad to say that I don't see all my projects anymore. Um, hold on, I have a filter. And without that filter, I see everything again. Wonderful. So getting back to the milestones, I only selected the milestone date and I already got something populated. 
Now I want to add the milestone name as well as a task category. And the task category is a legend value, just like we had for the tasks or the initiatives. When adding a milestone legend, you get more colors inside your solution. We can add tool tips as well, where we can add the milestone WBS, as well as what could I do more? Adding the task type in here as well. Let's go back to focus mode and have a closer look. So inside focus mode, I now have my colors for my bar charts and I have my colors for my milestones. There's a specific type of milestone that is a star kind of figure. And that means that there is more than one milestone at that date. So that is called a stacked milestone in the tool. We have key deliverables, we have tasks, we have features, we have legal, we have gate, we have key milestones. All these types of milestones are in here. So that is a lovely overview. Now there's two additional values in here, custom skill date and custom skill groups. These are new, newly added features that I haven't found any documentation on yet. But if I find out, I'll add that in the comments below. And on top, we have the parent. And the parent is ideal for um, getting hierarchy into your visual. And I have an excellent example here in the hierarchy example page. And on this page, I'm focusing on a single project, the motorcycle helmet with built-in satellite location service. Lovely name. I don't know who figured that one out, but I love it. So if I look at that single project now, and I look at the Power Gantt chart visual, what I've done is I've added the task ID, the parent task ID, the task name, start date, and end date. Very simple, very clean solution. However, there is something wrong with the visual. It doesn't stack. And after reaching out to their support service, which is excellent because I got a response the same day, I found out, well, they found out that it is due to the capitalization of the UIDs. So the task ID is all in caps and the parent task ID isn't. So what I did to mitigate this is I created a column that is all uppercase. Let's add that in here. And what we'll see is now we have that little plus sign here. And I can open that up and we'll see that there's an initiative, there's a gate, there's a business case, and there's a gate, and there's execution, and probably another gate. If I open that up, there's an execution task. If I go back to the initiative and I open that one up, I can see that it's a lighter color of the original top level task. So that's everything related to the columns that you can add to this visual. Now there's a couple of other things that are interesting to note. And let's go back to our original example and get that into focus mode because we're going to look into the formatting of this visual. Found out that zooming in and out helps reformatting the page correctly. On the formatting page, there is a couple of visual specific items that you need to be aware of. There is a licensing situation for this visual. And I can understand why they want to have a licensing or a paid structure for this visual because it contains so much that you can do with it. If you want to work on this visual and you can test it out just like I'm doing here, everything is fine. But the moment that you push this to a uh, workspace in the Power BI service, you'll get these kinds of messages and they're very in your face that you're looking at a unlicensed version of the product. More details about the price of this visual can be found at the Nova Silva website, of course. Then the grid, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can add a vertical grid which will create a vertical grid between the columns of text as well as with the general visualization. 
I am more a fan of the horizontal grid because it just gives that much more clarity of what row contains what data for which project. You can change the color, you can change the thickness, row padding, maximum row length, the uh, usual suspects, I would say, for anything related to grids. Column headers, normal situation here. Date scale is something that you uh, can change the top bar where it currently says years and months, um, but we can change this to years and quarters. And the larger your time scale is, the larger you want to have your uh, date scale, obviously. Now, because this is spanning multiple years, you might want to only look at year values. You might also want to look at quarter values and as you move closer and closer to a day kinds of basis, you would, for instance, look at a year and a week value. Oh, and <laughs> the zoom jumps back as soon as I change anything. But here you have the years and the week numbers. Very nice. Let's get back to years and quarters. Show the today line. Yes, that is always very useful. And then there is an option to change the start date and the end date. Now this is ideal if you want to focus on a single time frame, such as the current year. So we can change this to 2022, starting at the 1st of January, all the way till the end of the year. And here we have the full list of activities based on that year. Now, if you remove that value, it turns back to auto and it will populate everything that is in the range of the data set that you have available. The legend, you can change the title, the color of the title and text size. Then the items are related to the category that we have. Same goes for the milestones, by the way, because the milestones also is something that has its own color schema. Uh, what nice thing I found here is that there is an option to, for instance, say that key milestones, well, maybe I want to have the key milestones in a specific, very screaming color, such as bright green. And I can change the color, uh, not only the color, but I can also change the shape of that milestone. Can make this into a star for instance and once that pushes through it comes immediately clear that we have key milestones here we can also change the label color um, let's make this white because we have very dark colors in the bar chart for sh uh, for now making the text that much more clear um, and we have a progress bar we can change the color of the progress bar and of course we have the zoom slicer then on the general side we have the normal suspects title effects header icons tooltips alternative text properties everything you come to expect to be available for each and every visual and that's it for the power again chart visual in power bi now you might also like the other Gantt chart visual videos that I have posted before. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.